Quieten down a bit now as well, which is good. My name is Ben Schultz and I'm one of the co-founders and directors of Bastion Cycles. Uh, my name is James and I'm the engineering director here at Bastion. Uh, I'm Charlie Kranswick. Uh, I'm a head technician and designer going from the website. My name is Dean McGeary and I'm the technical director here at Bastion. Mi chiamo Erika e lavoro per Velocraft. Noi verniciamo tutte le biciclette per Bastion. My name is Ethan, I'm a design engineer at Bastion. Hi, my name is Radu and I work with Composite at Bastion. Hi, I'm Julia and I'm here at Bastion maintaining the 3D printers. Previously to working at Bastion, I finished an internship in Spain working on the same machines and I'm still currently studying a double degree at, of mechanical engineering and industrial design at RMIT University. So I'm Steve Gartner, uh, Velocraft is a business I decided to come up with, painting blocks for the people of Melbourne and Bastion Prover. My name's Ian Mickelson, I do the graphics work and paint prep for Velocraft. Uh, my name's Alex, I'm the apprentice. Uh, so my name's Stuart Morton and I uh, run a business called RiderFit Cycling Performance which is based here in Fairfield, Melbourne. Uh, technically my title is Managing Director but not like you would expect in a big company. We're only a team of five so I do that kind of business planning of course but and I do a lot of other things as well so paying bills, ordering stock, ordering parts. Um, I, I'm the main contact for all of the customers and, and our dealer network, supplier network. Uh, I do the initial geometry design before handing it over to the guys in engineering. Um, I also get involved in making the bikes, bonding, cutting tubes, finishing lugs, prepping, testing, you know, a bit of everything really. So day to day I'm responsible for frame set production, making sure that everybody else in the team's got what they need and can do their jobs. When, obviously when we started, um, I was the primary bike designer, spending a lot of my day uh, in CAD designing things, but now as our team's grown a little bit, we, um, we have enough staff in different areas of the business that I just make sure that everybody can do their job and I still spend quite a bit of my time uh, designing components and bikes as well. So in my role of technical director, um, I was very heavily involved in all of the design and development work very early on for the initial road bike and then subsequent models. So that involved things like stiffness and strength simulation, modelling, uh, running computer-aided engineering to check that we were confident in our designs. Um, I also developed some proprietary bike handling tools which really guide uh, the rest of the team in designing the geometry for each rider. Also very involved with testing to make sure that what we've designed actually meets what we intended it to do. And that involves uh, setting up bench tests and we test the ISO international standards for strength and durability running those tests and also checking stiffness and um, other metrics off the bike. Um, look, we all do a little bit of everything, uh, but yeah, look, mostly I'm downstairs on the factory floor uh, helping build the frames themselves, so everything goes along with that. Uh, but then also I'm a bike mechanic, so building the bikes. Most do we do a frame set, so boxing them up to go overseas or elsewhere in Australia. Um, but a fair few bikes that we do complete builds as well. Um, and then also design work, so paint design, small parts design, that sort of thing. So I print, I set up and I pull out all the really fun stuff out of the machines. Uh, my role consists of 
um, preparing CAD data to print. Uh, so for approved bikes, preparing the data, uh, latticing and slicing and preparing the print data. And then also managing the print schedule and production, um, which from this year is stepped up to two printers. So balancing all our bike manufacturing work as well as uh, all our batch and advance production for um, non-bike parts and also company, other company products. I pretty much work all on floor, so making bikes start to finish. I get given papers and yeah, make it a finished product. Really just wanted a, um, a change. Uh, love cycling, don't ride anywhere near as much as I should uh, anymore. Um, yeah, just wanted something something challenging, something else to do. I could see bikes, people needed someone to paint the bikes in Melbourne, so here we are. Uh, any custom graphics work uh, will come straight to me, so I've got to design it through Illustrator. Um, whether people know what they want or whether they don't, um, I've got to work with them to come up with a, a sketch, a design, an idea that they want to put on the bike. We've got to make it into a vector file and something that's plottable so that it can be cut out of vinyl, put on the bike and then sprayed. Um, so if, yeah, if I can plot it, Steve can paint it. Uh, since the beginning, so I guess we came up with the idea in 2014, but I was the first full-time employee from August 2015, so nearly five years. It's one of the co-founders with Benjamin and Dean. Been here since the beginning, so I guess it's four years. I think it's four and a half years. I've been at Bastion now for almost two months or three months. Previously to working at Bastion, I finished an internship in Spain, working on the same machines and I'm still currently studying a double degree at, of mechanical engineering and industrial design at RMIT University. Uh, I've been full-time at Bastion for around two years uh, with some um, part-time contract work prior to that. I've been working with Bastion for about three months. I used to be a chef, I used to work as a chef, so this allowed me spend more time with bikes. <laughs> so I've been at Bastion since the very start, which is about five years now. Um, involved with Ben and James back when we were creating the brand uh, and we all still worked at Toyota together. Um, through setting up the business, incorporating it and to today. A bit over three years now. Pretty much it's my dream job, you know. I, every day I get to do that I love. Uh, there's a lot of tasks that I don't necessarily relish, but in general, um, you know, this is, this is my legacy. This is what I'm working towards. I, I love coming to work every single day. Uh, yeah, it's a dream. I think uh, the, the flexibility we have and the opportunity to do something unique and something cool, something that uh, yeah, we're in control of is, is pretty liberating from the, the kind of structured or larger company that you know, we, we kind of cut our teeth in. So it's, it's pretty exciting to be pulling the strings on what we want to make. So I, I think the, like I said, the ability to combine engineering and uh, cycling is the, the number one draw card for me, but also working with a great bunch of guys um, coming into the workshop is always fun. It never feels like work. I guess working with Bastion for since about 2016, uh, doing some bike fits initially just to sort of uh, help them out with that part of their business. And um, I guess since then, yeah, I've been fitting for the last three years now. So any one of their local clients that, that come through here in Melbourne and Fairfield, I'll, I'll do those sorts of fits for them. And um, yeah, but the other part of my business is working with, with all riders, I guess, from all sorts of uh, different cycling disciplines all over the place, so yeah. Okay, Velocraft uh, started maybe three or four months ago. Uh, previously it was Bikes by Steve, when there was just one of us. But now there's a, a small team of us getting all these bikes painted. Um, before bikes, it was about uh, 23 years in the auto industry, from restorations to smash work. I wanted to work for Velocraft because I wanted to 
gain to the cycling community and to combine my passion as painting and designing with cycling and that was uh, the best platform to do so. Uh, yeah, so uh, Rider Fit's relatively new as a, as a business, that's about four and a half years, but uh, I've been fitting since about 2008. What do you mean by clean? Cassette. <laughs> Should we do this again? <laughs> what, 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 what did you ask me bro? Clean first. It's definitely not home and I think I wouldn't get away with saying bike so maybe work. The poor bike always seems to get the um, yeah. Left, left the side at the moment, too busy to ride it, so uh, give, give Mrs a hand with the uh, house a bit, but uh, yeah, I seem to be at work more than anywhere at the moment, so this place is getting a lot of my attention. Uh, definitely not my home, probably work, I, you know, I never clean my bikes that well. <laughs> I clean other people's bikes properly and then I don't have time for my own. Home probably. <laughs> Uh, my OCD ranking goes home, bike, then work. <laughs> uh, home, definitely. If you've met my wife, you'd know why. Mangio tanta pasta e pizza. Um, <laughs> I said I eat a lot of pasta and pizza. <laughs> Both, mostly plants. A little bit of meat every now and then, but mostly plants. Both. Ah, uh, meat. Meat all the way, sorry. A balance of everything. Plants. Oh, uh, <laughs> I eat everything and anything except for pumpkin soup. I cannot stand the stuff. <laughs> Omnivore. Both. I don't drink coffee. Juice. Apple juice. Orange juice. That's all I drink. Or. My coffee order usually is a cold drip, and if I'm feeling fancy, mix it with a bit of tonic water and ice. Uh, black coffee, hot or cold, don't mind. Uh, long black. Long black. Magic. Uh, flat white, straight up. I love coffee, but I also love chocolate, so a mock is probably going to be my go-to sometimes. Uh, the Demon, it's got a close place in my heart. I came up with the idea for it with Tom from Demon Frameworks and my own one is literally the lugs are just finishing printing today so I'm very excited about getting it. Uh, at the moment, the road bike. Um, my road bike is a pre-production prototype so it's very close to my heart. One of the oldest ones on the road um, and it's been a dream for four years now. Um, so yeah, I'm super happy with it. For me riding, I default back to traditional road. Um, the crossroad though in terms of the tech that's in it and the engineering is my favourite. I'm riding a super leger at the moment, but I need to build myself a crossroad, I think. Definitely crossroad. I think uh, the the flexibility we have and the opportunity to do something unique and something cool, something that uh, yeah, we're in control of is, is pretty liberating from the, the kind of structured or larger company that you know, we, we kind of cut our teeth in. So it's, it's pretty exciting to be pulling the strings on what we want to make. Oh, to be honest with you, it's pretty cool. There's uh, a lot of moments that you just yeah, I have to give yourself a pinch now and again to see if it's actually real. It's, um, that's pretty cool just being part of it all. Um, I think it's the flexibility that we have. For me with a small baby, she's just coming up on one this last year. I've uh, really benefited from that. So, you know, I get to drop my kids off at school. I pick them up a lot of times. Um, I work from home a couple of days, you know, just, the flexibility of, of, of a small business, but we try to engineer that in for us and, and our staff as well. Yeah. Uh, I like the camaraderie 
uh, not just within Bastion but within our shared workspace at 412. Uh, I like the flexibility that we have. Uh, as a small company we can set a direction uh, and try something and review quickly um, which can really accelerate development. So we're quite agile in that respect and that couples with the way in which we make our parts. Uh, we're not locked into making lots of the same thing. Um, by printing we can try things, um, new variations every time until we're happy with it. So I like that mentality that the company has and it makes for a workplace which is quite um, like fun and energetic and um, the way in which we do things and what we do together is, is quite enjoyable. Uh, because it's a small company, getting to do a little bit of everything is really satisfying. You know, we're not all, you know, we, we've certainly got our roles within the company, but we're also doing a little bit of everything. Everyone gets to have some input into, you know, new products or things that we're trying to work out, yeah. Probably, you know, the, it's probably just a small business thing for me and it's just uh, making sure there's enough money coming in so everyone gets paid. That's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, yeah. Small company problems, you know, it's uh, often you need more hands on deck but you don't have them, but that's, yeah, that's fine, it's part of it. Hmm. I honestly, it, it's not, it's a bit hard to think of a worse thing. I honestly wake up in the morning and feel just stoked to be doing what we're doing. And um, my wife and I actually kind of fight over who gets to go to work. So we, yeah, we're having a, we're having a good time. There's been some trying times. Again, keeping the printer running, keeping usable parts coming off the printer. Um, we've had moments where we just haven't been able to to get it right and get it working, and it's been long days long nights as well feeding the printer powder to make sure production keeps going um, and it can be with a small company again it's pretty trying there's not necessarily um, additional resource where you can you can step back and let someone else do it we kind of need to keep pushing on together so uh, there were some times last year where we were struggling to get our production out and um, a lot of that was um, my responsibility with the printer and um, yeah, it was a steep learning curve to try to get um, consistent parts coming off the printer for, for some of our bikes, but um, getting through that was, was difficult, but a good milestone. Probably the feeling I remember the most is at the Tour Down Under a few years ago, descending Montacute Road, and we were like on pack. There was like 10, 15 of us all on bastions, and we're just descending and I was just looking around and seeing us and customers just enjoying this bike that we'd created and just that feeling I was like that's why I did this you know like that there yeah, that was a really a really mo a moment for me that I'll, I'll never forget uh, there's lots um, but it usually comes down to the experience of going for a ride with somebody on one of our bikes riding alongside them and looking at that person riding the machine that you know I've designed and we made it and there it is in the real world and then getting people's feedback about how much they enjoy it and why they like it um, and there's been some yeah particular customers along the way who've had that ride together experience I think that uh, cements for me that we're doing something that um, Makes people happy. Well, meeting these new people, these amazing people that working here, it's great to work with such a professional uh, team. Yeah, I I really enjoy um, how they approaching uh, work. Like, yeah. Um. Best moment, because we're, we're constantly making new things, it's always great when you can reflect on what you've done previously in terms of the parts that we've designed and printed. And then when we face um, something new, we can implement those learnings and it, it, can, it can work first time. Um, a lot of the printing is somewhat of a prototype for almost every plate we do. Um, so to implement some of the things that we've learnt previously and some of the 
the opportunities we've had. Um, it feels good to put something on a plate and print it first time and it works. Um, so almost every time the printer gets recovered, it's, it's a good sense of achievement. Oh wow, um, there's been lots of great moments. Um, getting our first prototype titanium printed parts in was fantastic to see the see the product go from CAD to real life. Um, riding that first bike, even though it was just a few laps around the block, was great to see that next evolution. Um, finishing the testing, the bench testing on that bike and having it pass was great. <laughs> um, then seeing customers on bikes, seeing how they find the ride, the handling, the, the whole bike experience is really, really re rewarding. The best moment of working for Velcroft was probably realizing that I was creating something or being part of an idea or a creation made by us and uh, to meet the criteria and the request of a customer and also probably every single time that we do, we do paint a bike and we see the customer reaction is probably the best feedback ever. Um, it's definitely the, the collaborative aspect to working with the guys at Bastion. I think what they're doing is pretty amazing um, in a relatively short amount of time. I guess they've, yeah, I, I'd like to think they've shaken up the, the industry a little bit with their ways of uh, engineering bikes and um, yeah, I think working with them and being immersed in what they're doing and their, their sort of enthusiasm and motivation to, to make things better and improve on a lot of parts of the bike industry and, and bike manufacturing, I guess, is uh, what is awesome to be around, yeah. Uh, it's probably most satisfying uh, doing a hand paint job a few months ago uh, for a customer in the Netherlands, uh, you know, getting to design it, talk to them and then, but also painting it by hand, whereas usually most of our bikes are painted by fellow craft here. Oh, I couldn't pinpoint anything in particular, but you know, there's always the odd thing that you break and that happens, but yeah, you fix it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely back in early 2017, so, um, one of the first bikes we made, bike number three, I got a, a call and, a, and an email on a Sunday morning and one of our customers had had an issue with his bike, um, part of it had failed and he'd, he'd come off and hurt himself and uh, yeah, you obviously uh, never want that to happen. Um, it's especially personal for me because I'm the one that talks to the customers and takes them through the journey and you know, you get to know them and to become quite friendly with them and then to know that something that you've made has had an issue and, it, and it's caused someone harm is, is, uh, is devastating. But, you know, we learn a lot from that experience. Um, I think we did a really good job of managing it. Uh, we, we obviously brought that bike back and, um, you know, compensated that customer for that for that bike because he didn't want to get it back but um you know we also then did a, a recall of 16 other bikes and retested them and, and made sure that um, we rebuilt all of those to a, a new process that we developed and um so far they've all gone back into their customers and, and have had no issues since so um yeah, I think that was definitely the worst moment, but I think it's through the worst moments that you grow and you learn and, uh, you know, it'll stay with us forever, that, that thing that happened and it, and it drives us to be better every day. <laughs> when somebody complains about their job, that I just spent a week doing for it. <laughs> oh, look, I guess with, with any product development, you go through making prototypes and stages of things and trying things and you have failures and setbacks. So there's definitely been um, early on, you know, things we tried and tests that failed, but we you know, developed solutions for them and design changes to get around it. So, you know, there's, there's up and down in product development, but um, nothing sticks out in my mind massively as a, as a worst moment necessarily. Too optimistic, Jane. 
The worst moment, the ones that cause us the most stress is when we find issues with bikes. Um, we had a few hiccups early on, which caused us a lot of stress, uh, but I think we handled it really well and we learned from that and improved both our product and our processes from that. But that niggle in the back of your head that you've got real people out there riding your product um, is a lot of responsibility and that can sometimes be stressful. That one was the stripping a carbon, a carbon frame to raw carbon. Ah, oh, <laughs> where do I start? What's the worst thing? Uh, they're noisy when they make bikes, which gets in the way of my bike fitting. Um, there's a lot of random decisions. <laughs> a lot of, yeah, that's probably all I'd say on that. <laughs> That's a tough question. I don't have a who. I think the what inspires me is the pursuit of improvement. Um, knowing what we know now, trying to always learn how to improve that, how to do things better, uh, both for the product and ourselves. So it's, it's the what. Yeah, I, I think what inspires me is other people that have gone ahead of me and done what we're trying to do. So, uh, in particular, people like uh, Christian von Koningsegg is a massive inspiration. Um, Horatio Pagani in the car world, but also people like Heston Blumenthal, you know, like guys who under their own sort of funding and volition have, have changed the game and created something new and you know, started in their garage or their own kitchen experimenting and, and doing things and, and you know what, like from all accounts, maybe not the whole time, but where they're at now, they're able to do that without being as well from what I can read, you know, there's, there's high profile people like Steve Jobs, for example, who people admire, but I don't want to do things that way. I think you can do things by having an idea and a product that people want to get behind um, and you can innovate and push yourselves without being yeah, without being a real, you know, a real ball breaker. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll say my dad. My dad's always pushed on through everything that's been thrown at him. Um, yeah, real, a real big inspiration for me to, to, to be able to work through stuff that's happened and, 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 and keep going and stay strong. Um, our inspiration would probably be, one of my favourites is um, Robin Williams. He has a quote that says, um, you always got to be a spark of madness, don't lose it. So I kind of take that everywhere that I can and, and apply it to, to even the workplace and always have a bit of, a bit of fun while you're, you're even being serious. I often, I have a, I have a bit of a obsession and uh, with the Apollo era moon landing stuff and the amount of development and the incredible amount of innovation that happened in the, the mid 20th century, particularly at NASA. And things like, uh, like Kelly Johnson at the Lockheed Skunk Works, doing the SR-71 Blackbird. Like his approach to product development, development then was um, cut away all the red tape on freak, like drawing and drawing release and revisions. And they did, like the SR-71 Blackbird in the Skunk Works, they did with a completely cut down minimal number of engineers and machinists and they put them in the same office and the people that made drawings sat next to the people that were going to machine the parts and they were able to do things and iterate really quickly. So, I, yeah, I'm a little bit, a little bit, I like the, I like that kind of era of uh, engineering development, like there was a real steep curve of, uh, I guess aerospace and engineering development happened back then. Well, I think it's probably part of the reason why we're doing this little get to know you is we're really a team of five people, six people, um, perhaps have an outward facing perception of being more than that, maybe less, I don't know, but um, yeah, we're a small team and we're do everything in-house pretty much so people are a little bit surprised that you know we actually make the frame ourselves 
um, and make the bicycle components ourselves. So yeah, small team actually making a product. I think some people might be surprised. Uh, I think that we're from Melbourne and that we're local and um, that we do as much as we can in-house and we only plan to do more in-house um, and that we're, yeah, that we're, we're not a big company, we're not a big corporate, but we're a few people doing what we love to do and, um, and can hopefully share it more amongst a pretty strong Melbourne cycling community. Uh, I just, just that we're such a small company. You know, I think uh, online presence suggests we're a, a pretty big place and you know, we're, we're, we're small and you know, even in here we're five businesses under the one roof in a pretty small factory. So, uh, But that, yeah, that, that, that's cool and certainly shows what, how we can grow. Um, I think we probably do almost too good of a job of, I guess, showing ourselves as this big high-tech company and I think that was a conscious decision that's what we want to be and eventually we want to be you know the latest and greatest of everything but in reality we're just a small team of people pursuing our dreams and you know we're bootstrapping it we're using used equipment and things you know and and, it, and really the quality is still there but it takes us a lot longer than it should to do that but we just don't have the capital to invest in you know, five CNC machines and measuring equipment and automate everything, you know. So, yeah, I think we probably paint this image of being bigger and and more funded than we are. So, yeah, maybe that's what partly this video will, will show. Yeah, obviously. Everybody asks that question about any product at any time. So, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, people would have said the same thing about Cars, you know, cars are pretty good, you turn them on, you drive them, but you drive a car from 20 years ago, it's a very different machine. So it's no different in any product development. Um, life cycle bicycles is not, you know, as much as the configurations, two wheels, two triangles, join them together, um, fundamentally hasn't changed for more than 100 years. There's, we, we're learning things about the way that we build bikes and the materials that we're using that still surprise us. So. You know, I can see that there's things we're learning about our materials and things we can do that are going to improve our bikes as we go forward. So, of course, everybody doing the same. Oh, it'll, it'll definitely change. I mean, the regulations play a part in it from the UCI, I guess, because everyone follows what the racing's doing. But um, uh, it'll all, it'll change absolutely. Like there'll be there'll be a new material or a new combination of materials that, that comes out. But that being said, with what's available at the moment, I really do honestly believe that the way that we combine the materials and the technology is the way to make the best performing bike in the world at the moment, yeah. So the process of borrowing a bastion, I think definitely uh, it's better described as an experience. It's not like, I guess, buying an off-the-shelf bike, obviously, and it becomes a relationship between, hopefully, us and, and the customer, or perhaps one of our, our partners around the world, but um, because you're so involved in every decision along the, along the way about what has gone into the bike, in terms of geometry and customization, and paint options and that kind of thing, it's much more than just a, uh, a normal retail purchase. Um, so I think the, the experience and enjoying that over a few months while the, you know, the pro, you know, your design gets locked down and then the bike's in production and then finally, I think that's, I guess, the unique thing that we, um, we offer as do other custom builders. So that's definitely part of it. But then in terms of the ride of the bike um, and how it performs, we do have a, un a, a pretty unique uh, ability to combine different stiffness characteristics. So whether it's torsional stiffness in the frame um, combined with very uh, good vertical compliance, because of the modular way that we build the bike, we can tune those elements independently. Um, so that's usually the thing most people talk about. They can go for a 100 kilometer ride and not feel beat up at the end of it, feel comfortable when they get off the bike, but also when you step on the pedals, the, it, the bike reacts. So. Uh, we have we have a good balance of those two. Uh, I 
hopefully the company will just be still growing. Uh, you know, I think uh, there's lots more bikes to make. Um, me personally, I think the yeah, bike industry is lifer, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we've got the capacity and ability to develop some a pretty broad product line. Um, I hope that we have, we've got more models in our range across various different um, platforms and disciplines and I think whilst we don't necessarily need to be making high volume, I think we can be quite flexible in the kind of product we make. So I'm looking forward to more development opportunities um, both for our own products but also some of the other companies that we've worked with as well. Um, new challenges, new ways to uh, utilise our printing technology and some of the work that we've done. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the prospect of more and more product development. What's your favourite? I think more of the same but on a bigger scale. I, I think we've got a really good mix of building bikes. I'd like to see some more of the engineering consulting work being done. I think we've got some room to grow in other industries. So 3D printing for be it the automotive or aerospace industries. But that said, I don't think I ever want the company to get too big because like I said earlier, it's, it's fun hanging out with mates and engineering and cycling. And I think I'd like to hold on to that. Well, we definitely have I guess what you call a five-year plan, but we have a roadmap for the model development that we want to do in the next um, certainly three years and the number of bikes that we hope to be making in that time. Um, and it's not, it's not tens of thousands of bikes, it's, barely, it's not even probably thousands of bikes, but we have a strong idea about the next uh, set of models that Bastion is going to develop and, and uh, what they look like and how many. So I mean, we're currently occupying this, this space and we'll probably do uh, what we need to in, in this space, but um, yeah, every week that goes by, we, we're trying to build more. So. Doesn't always run smoothly. <laughs> it, can be, it can be tough um, and there's always hurdles as in, as in any business, um, but we always do our best to, to push past those hurdles. Um, Make sure that what we what we put out is always um, what we love and to the best of our abilities. So yeah, it's not it's not always easy, but it's definitely we always try our best. Um, yeah, I guess in the next five years, uh, continually growing the business, um, potentially having uh, you know a staff or two staff as far as fitters go. So training some fitters up to. Um, to take some of the load off of me, but also to expand what I'm already having some success at, yeah. You can have anything you want. Like seriously, you can go and buy your Giant or your Trek. They all come in blue or red, and that's pretty much all you get. Come in here, we can make any color, any scheme, put a picture of your daughter on it for, you know, anything you want. And we just did a bike with about a thousand ants on it, so whatever you want, you can get.